Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're looking at space weather and the big sunspots about to return. We'll hit an interesting story about another Tunguska event possibly happening in the future, and we've got another way in which the May 2024 solar storm went over the top. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Filaments collapse on the north, fully contained plasma event. Afterwards, eyes to the left with more eruptions coming from the incoming active regions that are still just over the limb. We saw them depart 12 days ago and they're about to return to the Earth facing half of the sun. They're firing CMEs and solar flares on a daily basis. More eruptive activity occurred as recently as this morning, just a few hours ago. There is a chance that we could have visibility of these sunspots by tomorrow. We're watching closely for their reemergence could be a space weather uptick afoot. Solar wind data here. Plasma speed has continued rising and has reached a pretty strong plasma stream, but it got there slowly and the lack of a dramatic shift in the plasma pressure means that geomagnetic conditions have stayed in the low solar storm state or even lower. No significant geomagnetic storms, but aurora likely were pretty solid at high latitudes. It's also worth remembering that before those sunspots come back and face Earth, the trailing side of the wide smattering of coronal hole openings will be facing the Earth. That is likely to be about Sunday, solar wind to arrive at Earth middle of the week. First up in the articles today, we're seeing a paper suggesting that larger components in the Tarid stream, one that peaks around this exact time each year, and if you didn't notice, perhaps it was all the candy, but apparently there is a Tunguska-like risk in 2032 and 2036 from larger chunks. That would really scare everyone outside at night, wouldn't it? The top story today tacks onto this one from just two days ago. This was the one where the solar storm level in May of 2024 was the largest since 1978, which is an absurd thing given the moderate, medium power of the solar events that caused them. It's a sign of the pole shift and the increasing vulnerability of our planet. Well, let's get another one here. Instead of geomagnetism, this paper looked at electrochemical changes where last year's major solar event was the largest since the Sabre launch in 2002. But that means it includes the 2003, 2004, 2015, and 2017 solar storms, all driven by way bigger solar flares and eruptions than what hit us last year. Two papers in three days confirming what we've been saying and seeing for well over a year. Vulnerability rising as the magnetic poles are shifting. That was a warning shot for our planet last year, and worldwide almost nobody heard it. Folks, take us to our winter tour going quickly. First one is less than a month away in Omaha. We are five weeks from the second event in San Diego. Tickets are available below. This is a four-hour masterclass on surviving the coming disaster event on Earth, five cities in five months. This is what it's all about and get your tickets at the link below. We only have a few events left this year at Observer Ranch, by the way. Self-offense training November 1st after the Halloween event. Observer speed dating 2.0, the 7th and the 8th. Middle of the month, we have the Pole Shift Conference following up the film premiere, and August Dunning will be there for that. And as you can see, we have some smaller events where hopefully we'll get some good Observer meetup time there at the ranch to close out the year. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone